This video is a tutorial on failure mode and effect analysis, also known as FMEA. The content of this tutorial is divided into three parts. First, an introduction to FMEA, second, how it is applied to blood sample testing, and third, the concluding remarks. Let's move on to the introduction of the FMEA. FMEA, or failure mode and effect analysis, is a risk assessment tool used to analyze risks in the processes or products. In a structural approach, a team can identify possible ways where a process or product may fail. The team should include four to six people, which are selected in order to cover as most relevant perspective as possible. The goal is to identify failures before they happen and prioritize remedial measures. The FMEA provides identification of the weak areas in a product or process, an estimation of the risk associated with possible causes of failure, a prioritization of the necessary actions to reduce risks, and an evaluation of the success of the changes in the process. The history of FMEA goes back to the 1950, where it was first used in the US Armed Force. In the 60s, its use expanded to the aerospace industry during the Apollo mission. In the 70s, it was applied in the Ford Motor Company for the first time. In the 80s, the automotive industry began using the tool to reduce risks related to poor quality. Since 2000, it has been used in wider variety of industries. For example, healthcare, food service, software, automotive, etc. Performing a process FMEA can be divided into five steps. Step one, each step in the process is identified. Step two, these steps are then evaluated based on failure mode, causes, consequences, and current control. Step three, the possible failures are prioritized and the risk priority number is calculated, also known as RPN. The RPN is based on three factors severity, occurrence, and detection. That is, how severe is the problem, how frequently the failure occurs, and how easy the failure is to detect. These three factors are then graded from, for example, 1 to 10, 1 being low and 10 being high. Step 4, the evaluation is analyzed, stating which steps in the process contain the highest risk according to the RPN. Step 5. The high-risk steps are analyzed and actions for risk reduction are determined. And finally, step 6. The process is re-evaluated and iterated. The advantages and disadvantages of using FMEA. Advantages. Early identification, that is, it can identify and address safety issues before the failure occurs. It's a structured and detailed approach. It inspires open communication of potential failures and their outcomes. It's possible to use in any type of organization and it results in actions to reduce failures. Disadvantages. The skills of the team members determine the quality of the outcome. The outputs are very influenced by the quality of inputs. A detailed analysis is necessary, an overview is not enough and it can be time-consuming and repetitive if the process is complex. Now, a practical application of the FMEA tool in the healthcare sector will be presented. We will take the blood testing process as a base case. As previously shown, the first step is to define the scope of the FMEA analysis. The blood testing process occurs in the context of the Danish healthcare system. Test requests are generated in the emergency department and are carried out at a central laboratory and then the results are sent back to the emergency department. The transport between the emergency department and the central laboratory is done by porters. High priority patients fall out of the scope of this analysis. The main stakeholders of the process are the patient from which the blood is drawn Active agents in the process, that is, the nurse, doctor, 
requesting the test, the nurse assistant, the porter and the bioanalysist. And also other agents indirectly related. That is, the emergency and laboratory department managers, hospital management, authorities, etc. The objective is to find weaknesses of the blood testing process and to propose measures to minimize them. As part of the first step, the severity, occurrence and detection scoring scales should be determined. In this example, we have defined a four grade scale for the severity and the occurrence and a five grade scale for the detection. If we look at the severity as an example, we give it a score one if the process is not delayed significantly, less than 15 minutes, and some steps may need to be repeated. A score two if the process is delayed significantly, more than 15 minutes, and some steps may need to be repeated. A score three if the process needs to be repeated, and a score four if the process produces wrong results, but are delivered as right. For occurrence, we give it a score 1 if it's very unlikely that the event occurs, and a score 4 if it's highly likely that the event occurs. And for detection, we give it a score 1 if we are certain to detect the event on time, and a score 5 if there are very low chances on detecting the event on time. The second step is to evaluate the process itself. There are four stages in the process. First, the blood is drawn from the patient. Second, the samples are transported to the laboratory. Third, the samples are analyzed. And fourth, the results are delivered to the nurse or doctor requesting the test. There are several modeling tools that can be used to represent the process. In this case, we use a process map to show these steps. This is the process map where the blood drawing and transportation stages are shown. We'll take the blood drawing states as an example. The blood drawing state consists of four process steps. First, equipment for the blood drawing is collected. Second, the patient information is transferred to the sample. Third, blood is drawn from the patient. And fourth, the sample is registered for a laboratory test. The evaluation is done through a table where the process steps, functions, failure modes, failure causes, consequences and current controls are defined. The current controls are tests, procedures or mechanisms that are in place in the existing process to detect the occurrence of failures. Let's take process step number one as an example. Equipment for the blood drawing is collected. It means that all necessary elements for blood extraction are gathered. Here we have three possible failure modes. Let's look at the first one. No usable sample tubes are available. The failure cause can be higher consumption of the tubes than expected. The consequence for that is that the blood drawing cannot be performed and the process is delayed. And the current control is a digitalized tube inventory management system. The third step is to prioritize possible failures. In this step, each failure mode is given a score for severity, occurrence and detection. Each score is evaluated from the scoring scale mentioned earlier. When that has been finalized, the risk priority number is calculated for each failure mode. The RPN is calculated by multiplying together the given scores. So if we look at process step number one and the failure cause, no usable sample tubes are available. The scores for severity, occurrence and detection are 2, 1 and 1, which gives us a risk priority number of 2. The fourth step is to analyze the results of the evaluation. In total, 17 steps were analyzed and 26 different failure modes identified. When summing all risk priority numbers for all the failure modes, the total accumulated RPN score was found to be 280. The highest RPN score of an individual failure mode was 24, the lowest was 1, and the average was 7.37. The RPN scores are used to rank the failure modes depending on their criticality. In this table, the highest score of the RPN is shown and how many times the failure mode appears in the process in question. It can be seen that registering incorrect data has the highest risk priority number with four appearances in the process, a 
and therefore has a great impact on the total accumulated RPM. From the table, it can also be seen that human errors are the most common failure cause. A Pirero diagram was made to be able to see graphically how each failure mode affects the total RPM value. The red box shows the 25% of the failure modes that produce 60% of the total RPM value. In step 5, the decisions for risk mitigation are made. If we take the second failure mode in the table as an example, incorrect data on sample, the action for risk mitigation is to make use of a computer system to register the patients and have automatic printers. This avoids direct human interaction with the transfer of data. It reduces the RPM score vastly and the new score becomes 4. In step 6, the process is re-evaluated. It should be noted that the new technology solutions generate new failure modes and that they should also be taken into account. For example, for the failure mode of incorrect data in the previous example, the risk mitigation was to have a computer system to register patients and automatic printers. With that, a new failure mode has been created. Since a server failure may now influence the outcomes of the process, this new failure mode needs to be evaluated as well. If the proposed risk mitigation action were to be implemented, the total accumulated RPN would decrease significantly, from 280 to 134. The new highest RPN score of an individual failure mode would go from 24 to 9, and the average RPN value would decrease from 7.37 to 3.53. From this, it can be concluded that the studied blood testing process is now safer and more robust. We will conclude our video with some final remarks regarding the use of the FMEA analysis. We have shown that the FMEA is a valid risk prevention tool which systematically addresses the weaknesses of the process. We've also shown how it can be applied in a healthcare context. However, it should be noted that the FMEA is a continuous improvement tool, and although in this tutorial a single iteration has been performed, in reality several iterations should be performed over time in order to reach the desired risk level. Finally, it should be noted that the new technological solutions that prevent one kind of risk may create new failure modes that should be evaluated. This is the end of our video. Hope you found it useful. Thanks for watching.